Good morning. Again, my pleasure to be here, up here with you guys today. I want to um, give you a little uh, squeak alert. I've been squeaking a lot today. And <laughs> since I talked to you last, I went from the height, there it was. I don't know if you heard that. <clears throat> I went from the high school, I now work at the middle school right here in town. And if you want to know ruthless, you squeak in front of a middle schooler. <laughs> I, thought, I thought high school was rough, like, but middle schoolers are just like, they, yeah, it's bad, it's bad. So... Uh, that's going to happen today. It already has happened. Just give you that warning now. So, we've been talking about the new series, Practicing the Way of Jesus. We're talking about the formation that comes from following Jesus. Um, I've been digging into this a little bit um, and reading, practicing, trying to get everything I can to be prepared for today. But I will say this, I'm not a Bible scholar. Um, uh, I'm doing my best. And so if a normal guy like me can read uh, scripture that is from normal people through, through normal people from God, uh, we're going to be okay. Um, And so you're going on a journey with me this morning, okay? Um, So last week uh, we heard Warren speak And something that really stuck with me uh, that I've been thinking about all week is the phrase, give up all that we are to receive all that he is. Give up all that we are to receive all that he is. And that's huge in my mind. Uh, We were challenged by Warren to rely on Jesus, walk with Jesus, and move into that title of being citizens of heaven to be more like Jesus Christ and to look different and act different in our world. One of the biggest things I heard last week, too, was we just need to hang out with Jesus in order to be like Jesus. And then that means we have to die to ourselves to be like Jesus. And that's hard. Uh, Carrie and I are finishing up a house remodel. And uh, for me, this house remodel has been nothing but anxiety. To be (laughs) complete. anybody else done a house remodel and you know what I'm talking about? But it spurs in me this anxiety, and, and last week when Warren was, we, had, we shredded our things getting in our way of dying to ourselves. I just kept thinking, I need to shred that thing every single day. <laughs> it says anxiety, right? And so, I started a new job in middle school. We're, we're on the verge of being done, um, and I'm just constantly trying to think to myself, how do I die to myself to focus on Jesus? And I get the privilege today to talk about scripture and how we can use that to remind ourselves and fill our minds with following Jesus. Um, Warren used the, let's see how this, there we go. Let's see where, I'm already out of order, that's all right. Uh, He used Matthew 16, 24, Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let them deny himself and take up the cross to follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. I've been really reflective on that, because how, what does that mean in the terms of scripture? Now, I'm not, oh, that's the back button. I was in middle school when I feel like I first dug into scripture for the first time. Now, I was raised uh, in the church, um, with scripture, uh, but not really for myself. It was like, this is what we do. And I was in middle school. I can't remember how old really, but uh, when I found, actually, it's Warren sent me this verse, and it's the first verse that actually made me dive into scripture on, my, on myself and hit me like a, like a brick. Um, it was Romans 12, 1 through 2. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world. That's where middle school me was like, whoa. Um, But be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. And I think about that and I go, still, not in middle school, I go, 
whoa. You know, the idea of giving up what the world has to offer in order to be acceptable and perfect through God. So it just comes back to what Warren challenged us to die to ourselves and practice so that our dry bones rattle and so that we follow God. Now, again, I get the privilege of talking about scripture. Um, I was telling Joey this morning, I'm like, I got the hardest practice. What the heck? <laughs> and for me, because it's hard, right? It's hard. But I want to start with a story of uh, a gentleman that I had the privilege of growing up with. Uh, his name was Bill Thomas. He was my grandfather. He um, was born in 1919 in West Salem, before West Salem was what it is now. It was woods. It was, uh, they lived off the land. He had so many stories of they, their house now, we Google mapped it one time, is a uh, shell station now in West Salem. But it, then it was like a two-bedroom house by the river where they would fish and hunt, and that's how they lived in a lot of poverty. Um, and he grew up with the Bible. When it came time, uh, he decided he wanted to be a lawyer. So he'd walk from West Salem to Willamette University every day um, to become a lawyer. That was his dream. Met my grandma, uh, moved to Lebanon with his law partner, uh, and lived here since. Um, now, he was, my grandfather was uh, a connoisseur of product manuals, okay? And not, not what you'd think. He didn't, like, save them and read them. He felt like he could make a better one. And so when we'd be over at his house, he would, uh, anybody know what dictation is? I'm sure there's some folks in here. And that, he would live his life, and I, I, he'd get a computer. And i hey, show me how to use this computer. So I'd sit down, turn on the computer, and he'd start dictating. I'm here with Colin on a Sunday. Uh, he's going to show me how to do the computer. Okay, so what do we do next? And so I'd tell him, okay, you're going to go to the start menu. We're going to the start menu. And he, was, he loved it. He loved giving himself directions in a manual that he could go back and read and listen to. When he passed away, he was 94 years old. We found tons of stuff where he gave directions to us later of what he felt we should be doing. And it would always be signed with his chicken scratch, uh, W.T., his name was William Thomas. Uh, but he loved manuals. And he was not shy to say that the manual for us is the Bible. That we are the product, and that is the manual. And I, I loved it, because even in his older age, he was tickled to say that uh, the Bible even related to us in how we get old. So he's 93, 94, uh, and he would read to me often 2 Corinthians 4, 16, therefore uh, we do not lose heart. Through outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. And so I bring up the story just because even as he moved older and he knew that his body was wasting, that he would lean into the Bible, and it was his manual. It was how he lived life. And he encouraged me as a young man uh, that that's how I should too. And I'm privileged in that. Okay? So that's why this message is titled The Product Manual. We are the product, and this is our manual. So before I get into it, I want to pray. And then we'll, we'll dig a little deeper. But God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for uh, your love and that you sent Jesus <clears throat> to live that word so then we can know Jesus. I just thank you so much for your presence and for your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So the Bible, Scripture, it can be daunting. 66 books. Uh, it was written by various authors. But my favorite part uh, was they were written by normal people that were, uh, Warren talked about this just barely last week, but 
God breathed through them and wrote these stories for us who were there and could see what happened. Originally written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. And the purpose is, provides religious teachings, more guidance, and historical accounts central to the faith traditions. And that's a general definition. And I'm going to go into what I feel like our definition is. But I found this interesting that statistically, 10% of Americans read the Bible daily. Only 10%. Now, we're going to break that down. That's a lot of people, but only 10% is, is interesting to me. Um, but the Bible is, definition to me is a lot more, and I'm going to go through those things in a couple bullet points. I'm a teacher at heart, so bullet points are kind of my thing. Uh, number one, we must let the Bible change us. We cannot change the Bible. Number two, the Bible shows us how to be like Jesus. Number three, the Bible gives us relationship with Jesus. And lastly, how do we use this tool that God provided in our everyday lives and how do we apply it? So let's dig in. We must let the Bible change us. We cannot change the Bible. I want to start by acknowledging that the Bible is really interesting in my research. And this rings so true to me. is the only piece of literature that really every single person has a relationship with. Either negative or positive. And that's striking to me. Like nobody, I mean, I can't say that everyone has uh, a relationship with, you know, Lord of the Rings right? Like that book, not everybody's like, oh my gosh, that, that stirs something inside of me, where the Bible does. Oh, every, every person has heard, they have a certain uh, preconceived notion of the Bible, whether you are in it or not. And some people have that love and admiration for the Bible, while others feel like, without even getting into it, that they're hurt by the Bible. And I find that so interesting. Some people are intimidated by the book, and some people just want to be in it all the time. Some people feel like they understand it and they feel God's presence. Some people are like, I don't understand it unless our pastor goes through it. But I, I find it interesting that if, what if we took a clean slate with the Bible every single time we open it and we let God move? And I, and I just, I pray sometimes and I wish that people would have that same thought. And I, I was sitting once with, a, with two friends, both pastors at the time, uh, and one who's not a pastor anymore was going through a time, a really hard time in his life, um, where he turned to us and he said, I don't know that I can believe this book anymore. And he's going, I don't know how you guys can read this book in our culture and think that this still holds true to what we, what we do. And my other friend turned, and, he, and this is where I got that phrase, he said, you know, I think... A lot of times we try to go into the Bible and try to change it to what we think is right instead of letting the Bible change us. And he used this verse, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. All scripture is breathed by God. And so there are times that we have, even though we don't understand it, we open the Bible and we start reading and we read it again and again and again so that we can experience God and that we don't come in and try to change what we believe to, to mold this, but we are molded by it. And I just find that so interesting that in our culture now, that's what we do. We have so many different ideas on social media. Um, we have so many ideas, just people talking that it's about us. And that this should fit into our life instead of us fitting into it. Again, uh, you want to see that, you, go, you come into our, our schools and you hear every person has a voice, right? Every thing in our life has a voice, social media, parents, everything. And we see the different voices and how they affect people. I see Sarah Haley shaking her head. And I'm like... Yeah, you want to know how, why a kid is the way he is? 
uh, look at who their friends are, meet their parents, and see where they're at. And you're like, oh, everything has something feeding into them. And what would happen if this was what was feeding into them? When we see it in the Bible, too, in the book of Acts, where the Bible is touching people's hearts and, and, and it is coming out in different ways, whether it's they're filled with hope and joy or they're picking up stones and they're throwing it. And we see it now in the same way. We know that Scripture is a library of writings that are both divine and human and lead us to Jesus. We believe, I believe, the Scripture is unfailable, authoritative, and sufficient, and the sufficient word breathed by God. I like to go further to say it's not just a manual for a life, but a letter written through humans from God. And I think somebody talked about it this morning, a love letter that God has placed before us to open our heart and be transformed. The, the book is not, a, we don't engage it to, for formation, we, we engage it for transformation. And if we open the book and let it change our life, it will. It has an impact on our lives, and we must continue to read the Bible to change us. Even if we don't understand it, even if it's uh, hard, a lot of people, I, when I was first starting to really dig into the Bible after I was a middle schooler, I'm looking for stuff that uh, is, feels good, you know, that touchy feeling, you know, I feel God's love, I feel God, I feel Him move. But there are times that there's parts in the Bible where it's not so touchy-feely and not so fun. But I believe that if we continue to read it and meditate and practice it and read it over and over again, that God can still move through those things that we're like, well, this is intense. And so we have to let the Bible change us and not change the Bible. Now, for some of us, that is, we need to keep, we need to read more scripture. I'm guilty of that. We're busy people. Everybody's busy. And sometimes we fall into uh, not reading the Bible. I don't know how else to put it other than uh, we get busy. We get entranced in, in into other things. And we have to figure out how we're going to dig into that for it to, to, to change us. Now, some of us know the Bible really well, and that's awesome. We read it as well, but there are some people that need to hear that the book itself is not God, but is a vessel for God to change us. And so we can continue to read and learn new things and let God change us, even if we're like, we got this, right? We get to use the Bible as something that can fill our minds daily. John Mark Comer talks about how uh, it is that Scripture is a primary way that we are transformed to renewing our mind. We can think God's thoughts after Him. We can begin to develop the mind of Christ. We begin to see the world as He sees it. Think how He thinks. Feel what He feels. And I found this is this is huge for me. As we curate the flow of our consciousness and intentionality, mirror that of Christ. We increasingly live in joy and peace and love of Christ. If we let the Bible change us, it becomes our stream of consciousness. It becomes something that we get to use and it's going through our mind every day, all day. Now, when I'm talking about anxiety, it's a real thing in my life. And my wife is the first one to say, and bless her, she'll be like, well, when was the last time you read the Bible? Because obviously you're letting other things fill your mind and you're not letting the word of God fill your mind. And you're not prepared for that. The Bible is not basic and it's not simple, but it deserves for us to dive into it time after time so that it becomes our, con our stream of consciousness and God can breathe through his word into us. We need to engage with the book with our hearts and our minds. It can demolish the strongholds of the enemy in our heart just by being in it. Too many times 
we in our culture try to make our own judgment calls, our own, I can do this, I don't need that. Time after time, we're shown that that's not going to work. And I'm, I'm one of those people. <laughs> I'm like, I was talking, talking to Carrie this week, and I'm like, I can figure this out. It's like, okay, you know? <laughs> so, we have to let the Bible change us, and we can't change the Bible. Number two, the Bible teaches us to be like Jesus. We know by reading the Bible that Jesus was educated in, in Scripture. And as a young man, we know that he was raised to study the Bible, or the Hebrew Bible, the Torah, and the first five books. We read in the Bible that Jesus was a part of learning. He wasn't just like pre-downloaded that shows his being a man, fully man, fully God, but that he, was, he learned just like we do. We read the Bible because Jesus did. We know that Jesus was devout Jewish and he did this regularly. We know that he would memorize it, pray, meditate, and practice. He was obedient to scripture, so why wouldn't we be? Jesus knew that it was God's truth, that he would be in it, and he was going to be committed to that. We see Jesus use the Bible in his teachings. We see Jesus use the Bible in times where he's struggling. Now, I don't mean struggling, but physically, I mean, Matthew chapter 4, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I haven't fasted and I'm hungry right now. I mean, that's a struggle, right? 40 days? The tempter came to him and said, if you're the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Now, if I had those powers, I'd be like, easy, done, right? But that's, that's me. When Jesus was tempted by his flesh, he was re weak and re he responded. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. When it's a struggle, he quoted Deuteronomy against his tempter. We can lean into Scripture because we know Jesus did. I feel like it's, it's, it's similar to uh, depositing into the bank. We deposit, we deposit, we deposit, because then when we need it, we can withdraw. And I feel like it's like that with the Bible. We deposit our time, we deposit our thoughts, we go in on the Bible, so when we have temptation, we can withdraw from the Bible as well. Not very often we do. When we struggle and we are hit hard times, a lot of times we don't, broadly speaking, I don't, I, I don't always, but I don't have enough to withdraw because I haven't put that deposit in. Jesus de deposited enough that he leaned on Scripture, so we should as well. We see Jesus quoting Scripture. Jesus believed that the collection was a telling of a story, and we see this on the road, uh, road to Emmaus, where Jesus appeared after crucifixion in chapter 24. Two disciples walking, and Jesus approached them, and after being raised to life, he said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? In the beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them that was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. He brought it alive. He also appeared to the disciples later and he said to them, this is what I've told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. Jesus didn't just like come up with new things. He leaned into scripture and used that for his teachings. But because of this, 
the Bible teaches us to be like Jesus. That leads me to number three, the Bible lets us know Jesus. Practicing the way allows us to be uh, in relationship with Jesus. The Bible itself does not save us, but it reveals the Savior, Jesus. And when we receive Jesus, the Bible and its contents gives us the wisdom to work out our salvation. We don't trust in Jesus because the Bible just says. We trust in Jesus because uh, he was a man who died and rose again for us. We get to learn that from the Bible and have a relationship with that man. We obey Scripture as an act of faith in Jesus because we want a relationship with Jesus. Now, when I started dating Carrie when I was a teenager, it's been a long time now, uh, but I wanted so badly to have a relationship with her that she occupied everything that was in me. And all my friends took a back seat. Everything I was doing took a back seat because I wanted to be with her, talk to her, text her, hang out with her. And if we want a relationship with Jesus... We can use this same book to do that. I just think about, sometimes when I'm reading the Bible, I think about what, what I could be texting Jesus to get a relationship, you know? And it's like, it's, just, it's like, this is almost like the phone, the, the phone of our, you know? But it's a direct line to having a relationship with Jesus. Just like that direct line of when I was young texting my now wife, any time, any time of the day, direct line. It allows Jesus to flow through our minds all the time, putting everything else in the back seat. I, just, I also think about, you know, if I use my time the way I like to, uh, I'm a researcher. Like, if I'm buying something new, all my time and energy is going into figuring out what's the best part of that. Okay? If I'm buying a new guitar, you better believe that I'm spending hours on my phone <laughs> making sure that that's the right hardware that I want, or who else used to play this kind of guitar? Or what's it going to sound like? But I, I just think, what if I'd use that same energy to research the Bible? Because I want to have a relationship with that guitar, right? I want it to be. But what if I use that same research to have a relationship with Jesus? So the Bible helps us know Jesus. Lastly, practical ways, the how. How do we apply it to our life? How do we use the Bible and the Word and God's Word and take it into our life? Warren said something this morning that really hit me. Uh, start somewhere. Begin with the small things. I'm not very good at that either. I'm known that... And, Again, my wife can attest to this, that if I'm not good at something right away, I'm done, <laughs> right? Like, learning something new, and if I have, like, a glimmer of, like, I'm, I'm all right at that, I'm like, I'll keep going, but if for some reason I try it one time, uh-uh, <laughs> not doing it again. We have to start small, and that goes the same with reading the Bible, right? If I start a couple days, and I'm like, okay, and then I fall off the wagon, and I, I'm like... Well, I guess I'll start January 1st, you know, <laughs> and we'll, we'll try it again. But we just have to start somewhere. We got to spend time in the Word, and it takes time and discipline and intentionality. Has anybody ever ran a half marathon or a marathon? I, again, one of those things I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> but my wife has, and I watched her train for half marathon, and that takes time and discipline, and intentionality. And she, she would do things like, hey, I got to set this time every day to go for a run. You're, you're in charge of our daughter. I think about what if we did that with the Bible? I now see Carrie. Uh, we're two weeks out from having an, another kid, and that takes time, discipline, and intentionality on her part, because she's like, I'm done, right? <laughs> but what if we... Use that time and intentionality and discipline reading the Bible. 
In our lives, we must memorize and meditate. We must reflect on the Bible and how we can apply it to our lives. We must take the words of Scripture and meditate so that we can hear God's voice. God will speak to us if we allow Him. And we get to use Scripture to open that door so we can recognize His voice. Like I said before, we can find God speaking to us in parts of the Bible we don't necessarily like about the Bible. It might be boring, it might be hard to read or uncomfortable, but if we keep reading it and wading into it, I believe that God will speak. Before reading the Bible, I like to pray <clears throat> that God reveals himself through all parts of the, of the Bible. I ask God, show yourself. Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount that anyone who hears these words and puts them into practice is the wise man who built their house on a firm foundation. This is our firm foundation. Yes. Memorizing scripture allows for the deposit so we can withdraw at times of need. And we can let it fill our minds because we put down that firm foundation. It's interesting, I was, ch I was chatting with a friend and there's that, that divide of spirituality and the Bible. And I believe that the, the Spirit moves through the Bible. In John 14, 26, Jesus says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. Well, where are those things that Jesus said to us? In the Bible. So the Spirit's going to use the Word to remind us of what Jesus said. Some practical ways about reading the Bible that I find interesting is using the escaped method. E, is there an example for me to follow? S, is there a sin for me to forsake? C, is there a command for me to obey? A, is there an application for me to apply? P, is there a promise for me to claim? E, is there an error for me to avoid? And D, is there a discovery about God to be made? Just this format, we can take a short verse and spend a lot of time in that word and practice and be intentional about applying it to our life. Another way is the SOAP method. This is where, what I learned uh, growing up. Write the verse again, scripture. Write the verse in your journal. Write down observations about the scripture. How can you apply an application? And prayer. Write out, not just pray, but write out a prayer to God based on what you just learned in the Bible and ask him to give you opportunities to live it out. So a couple very practical ways to read scripture. Another thing I like to imagine when I'm spending time in the Word or praying is imagining, let's see if I can say this right, imagining Jesus, me looking at Jesus sitting there with me, looking at me. When I'm reading the Bible, what, is, what does Jesus see in me? And what do I, how do I, Anybody had a, ever had a proud parent look at you and you're like, oh, wow. Just that, that feeling of being in the Word and knowing Jesus and seeing Him see me in that. We are on a journey to be formed by Jesus and not the world. And our culture is going to tell us otherwise. But if we lean into Scripture, we can believe that. Believe that. God is breathing through the word into us. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Psalms 1, 1 through 3 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of the sinners to take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates in the law day and night. 
We see this every day. Our culture is trying to take us uh, another way that it's all about us. But if we delight in the law of the Lord and we meditate in the law day and night, there's something more for us. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. We must plant ourselves in the word so then we can bear fruit and prosper. God's words place that in us. And I believe that. So to recap, we <clears throat> cannot change the Bible. The Bible needs to change us so that we can have a relationship with Jesus and know Jesus and learn from Jesus so then we can then stand firm and bear fruit and apply it to our lives. Again, start where we are and God will do extraordinary things. And that's, that's the challenge. Start where we're at and God will do extraordinary things. Do something small when you can. We have so many resources uh, to you know, podcasts, Bible on tape. I guess you don't say that anymore, right? Like Bible on phone, right? Uh, I, for one, really love uh, two resources. Uh, one is called The Bible Project by Tim Mackey out of Portland. I think he, he's moved since, but they break down books of the Bible. You should YouTube it. And he's, he's an amazing Bible scholar that... They, it's a kind of a cartoon, but it breaks it down so well, and he just, he speaks into that. Um, and then, two, another resource is just reading scripture with friends, and reading it out loud. I think there's a really powerful piece to that, um, where we can read it again and again and again, uh, and different minds can take it, and we can dive into it together. Those are two things that I love and use and want to do more of. But I just pray that we take the opportunity to lean into Scripture so that we can be more like Jesus and die to ourselves. And we're going to learn that through God's breathed word in the Bible. John Mark Comer ends with, there are all sorts of ways to read scripture, slowly and prayerfully, prayerfully, all alone to practice, or out loud in large swaths with a community. In deep study in a classroom while sitting under teaching or preaching in church, through memorization and more, all work together to fill, form, and free our minds from God, through God. Amen? You guys stand with me as I pray. God, thank you so much that you have provided a manual and a love letter for us to feel your presence, for us to experience you. God, I pray that you take this and you take it with us, this, this practice, that we can step into that so that we are dying to ourselves daily to live for you. Thank you so much for this family. And I thank you so much for your son, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Have a great week. Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching this YouTube video. Hope we've already done this, but if not, hit the like, subscribe, ring the bell. We'd love to stay connected with you. This is a great way if you're out and about to make sure you remain part of what we're doing here at the River Center. There'll be another great video next week. So check it out and hopefully we'll see you soon. Thanks.